how you doing? Justin here. Today we're checking out Beds Are Burning by Midnight Oil and there's some really cool little interesting guitar-y things going on in this song. Uh, there's quite a lot of keyboards as well so I'm going to show you a couple of ways of kind of negotiating the, the keyboard parts I guess is what we're trying to incorporate into the guitar as well and there's a few kind of odd timings which are worth discussing as well. So First thing I want to mention is there's quite a lot of layering on this record. So between the different guitar parts, there's a very strong acoustic guitar part, particularly in the chorus. Uh, so I'm going to explain the strumming pattern that that will be played on uh, for the acoustic as well. Uh, I was just kind of sticking to kind of simpler open chords, uh, just being played once and letting them kind of ring out, which is a really nice textural thing to go over an acoustic guitar part. Both of those things work really well, depending on what type of guitar you're playing. You definitely, this song works on acoustic guitar as well. Don't uh, for a second think that you have to play it on electric. Um, because I'm doing this lesson. So uh, the first thing let's talk about is the uh, the very intro with this E chord G and an A. So we've just got this. Okay, so regular open E chord. G chord, I tend to use the rock G, so using fingers three and four on the thinnest two strings. And then an A chord, I find it easier to use the first finger bar there for the, that particular A chord rather than the one using the three different fingers, but whatever you would feel comfortable with. And what's important there at the beginning is you realize that it's coming on beats three, four, and one, which is a, feels a little bit weird uh, because it's the first chord we hear. We tend to think of it as being one, but you need to count like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then we're into the main kind of riff. I shortened it a little bit there uh, at the intro uh, just because it felt like a, an uncomfortably long gap. But make sure that uh, you understand where you are in the bar. It'll help you be able to play the tune along, especially if you're doing it with a band. So that happens a couple of different points in the song and on different beats just to confuse things a little bit more. It, it kind of places it differently uh, in the bar. So you need to, the easiest way is to use your ears is to listen to the original recording, but I will talk about the counts for that a little bit as well. Um, Next thing to look at is the riff. The riff is a really nice little thing. We've got a bit of palm mute, first of all. It's all based on the thickest E string. Okay, so we're going to be playing open, open, six, seven, open, open, six, seven, open, open, four, five, open, open, three, two, is the little pattern. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Now, just a little uh, side note, when I played this in a band many years ago, I always just thought it stayed there. I guess it gave me a chance to, uh, you know, look around the room and interact with people rather than trying to concentrate. And I find it really hard to remember to go down to play those other ones. You might have a similar feeling. So you just have to concentrate. It's one bar here, one and two and three and four. Second bar, we go down. Up, up, head down, but going up, down. Six, seven, six, seven, four, five, three, two. Six, seven, six, seven, four, five, three, two. Okay, it's not a particularly difficult riff at all. Now, on the original version, that riff is going through for the first verse, and in the pre chorus, uh, the time has come to say fair is fair, that part. The guitar riff keeps doing that, but the keyboards take over and they start doing the chords. So they're doing the time has come to say fair's fair and they do little swells and stuff but what I've always done if I've been in a situation where I've had to cover more of the parts is to, keeping this kind of going just on the E because it gives the effect of the riff even if you're not I did try and think about trying to figure out a way of keeping that whole riff while playing the chords but it ended up tying my fingers in knots so just easier just to play that low E with a bit of palm mute and on the beat just strum through the chord so E two and three and four and G and then A so I'm just keeping the eighth notes and back to E okay just slow it down so I'm just literally do it, pushing the pick all the way through the strings and then just going back to the mutes it's worth practicing just on the one chord so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and push two three and four, one and two and three and four and 
It's a really good technique. It could be a nice way of kind of keeping the momentum of the song while bringing those spread and hanging chords out in, into, into the mix as well. I think it's a pretty nice thing to do. So the pre-chorus, we've got an E to D. Now we're keeping that E going. We shouldn't. It's kind of a wrong note. Same on the A, but it still works. That's the A and then back to E. Same sequence again to E. To D. To A. And then to F sharp bar chord. And you want to let that one ring out. So F sharp based on the second fret. So second, fourth, fourth, third, second, second. Big bar chord using an E shape. You just want to play that and let it hold on for two bars. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we've got those chords like the intro, the E, G, A, but they happen on beats one, two, and three. And then there's beat four, which is sustained, and then there's two beats, so a little two, four bar thrown in before the chorus, which is a little bit awkward. So we end up from the F sharp, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, and then we're into the chorus. So just be aware of these kind of little quirky things that happen with the rhythm. It's, you know, the easiest way always is to count along with the original recording if you're not sure how it goes. Just literally count along one, two, three, four, one, two, and then see if you can spot where things go a bit awkward because it's not that uncommon to have you know, a two, four bar thrown in. Particularly, seems like Aussie rock seems to do quite a lot of that. The crowded house do it a lot. So let's have a look at the chorus now, and we're going to start off by looking at the kind of the electric part, which is the long sustained chords. We'll keep it simple straight, first of all, just with a single strum on the chords, really, and then I'll talk about uh, adding in the little riff thing, which doesn't really appear to be on the guitar part on the original recording, I just noticed, but I've been playing it that way for a while. Uh, and then we'll go into the uh, acoustic and look at the, the strumming part in the acoustic guitar. Uh, the chord progression is relatively simple, it's just really this E minor C, G, G, E minor C, D, D. But there is a little rogue B7 that happens for beats three and four of the, of the eighth bar. But let me uh, play through it now so you can uh, see how all of that goes. So three, four, E minor dance, and when the C is turning, G, two, three, four, G, two, three, four. E minor sleeps when the C is burning, D, two, three, four, D. B7, there it is, E minor dance, and when the C is turning, G, two, three, four, two, three, four, E minor sleeps, and while the C is burning, D, two, three, four, and there's this little pre-chorus as well, E minor down down to C, fast, fair, to G the rent, then to play a share little build there at the end which is kind of nice as well so that's probably what you want to start off with is just really keeping it simple and playing those chords once I would recommend putting a bit of energy into it you can do a thing called framing the chord which is a little down up down just before you hit the chord so two, three, four, one, two, three, four. and the last down is the one that comes on the beat so you get one Okay, so it's, it's really the, the, the final two sixteenth notes of the bar before, which ends up sounding a little bit complicated. Just think of it as a down, up, down, and that last down strum is the one happening on the beat. Otherwise, counting it becomes a little bit, uh, little bit problematic. So the first thing would be just to learn to do it like that, which is just really simple strumming. You can definitely put in a few extra strums if you wanted to, if you want to kind of develop the energy a little bit. Uh, one thing I found, particularly on the G chords, I really wanted to add in this riff that I hear in my head, which is kind of on the record, it might be a synth part or something, but uh, in the E minor, so we go, How can we dance when the C is turning? G, two, three, four really hear that as being a, a dominant part of the, the melody of that chorus, even though it's very subtle on the original recording. And I'm just playing the root note of the G, the third fret on the thicker string, open A, open fifth string, and then second fret on the fifth string. I'm using my second finger so I'm ready for that next E minor. You don't have to add that in, of course, I don't even really hear it as being on the record, actually, to tell the truth. but. It sounds nice and it kind of works well. So that would be the first thing, and that's kind of, if you like, the electric part. Just note the bridge there, I, I kind of glossed over that a little bit. That's E minor. 
to C first fair to G and then to the D you definitely want to do it a bit of a build so all down strums one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and you know really see if you can start quiet and gradually build that up there because when you drop back into the riff it sounds really cool and those kind of elements are some of the things that really you know lift your playing up a gear if you take it from just playing it real real dead simple you know so uh, let's look at the the strumming part for the acoustic as well but rather than uh, going to an acoustic I'm just going to turn the volume back a bit clean the sound of my guitar up a bit good trick if you didn't know that on electric guitar if you've got a little bit of grit a little bit of distortion turning the volume down definitely changes cleans up the sound a bit and I've just gone on to the uh, setting of the middle pickup and, and half of the back pickup as well just you can hear straight away it's a very lot cleaner sound so the strumming pattern on the original is just even eighth notes so just on the E minor down up down up down up down up down up down up down so just how can we dance when the earth is turning G two three four boom boom how do we sleep while our beds are burning D two three four one two B seven E minor dance when the earth is turning now sometimes on the original you can hear that this so the tricky thing about that is that really strumming is is best when it's consistent when your hand moves consistently all the time down and up like a little pendulum or whatever and as soon as you're going to do it do an extra down and up in there that's faster it can kind of throw you out so it's really something that you want to practice just holding the guitar with the muted strings and just start off without it in one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and then one and a two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and a two and three and four and one and a two and three and four and one okay it's not a particularly hard little pattern but it can be a nice thing if you're doing regular down up strumming in a song to be able, you could put it in at other points in the bar as well just in this particular song you'll hear it if you, now that I've told you about it you listen out for it you'll hear it comes in it's not all the time but it's a really nice way of kind of breaking the rhythm up a little bit on that part um, very nice arrangement this really hearing the, the the electric guitar kind of ringing out and the acoustic guitar kind of moving things along underneath you know and the synths are quite dominant as well but all, all of the things together make for a nice track so it's definitely worth you know listening out there's a couple of points as well where he strums the chord and just picks out the notes individually from the chord and those are the kind of things you know if you're playing by yourself it can be difficult to kind of mess up the rhythm the rhythmic feeling of the song to, in order to do that but in a multiple guitar situation when you're jamming with your mates or you're playing in a band or whatever it's definitely worth listening out for those things I've definitely given you enough tools I've given you all of the bits you just really want to listen to the original recording and try and figure out some of those the more look at it more in depth if you're into doing the tune and you want to play it in a band or whatever um, later on in the song I should mention as well in the second chorus there's a couple of the the stops that get a little bit different okay where the, the length of the stop is is not what you might expect and uh, again you can count it and I'd recommend that you learn how to count it but again just listening is is usually the easiest way around those kind of things rather than putting too much emphasis on the brain remember music's about listening and that's really the best way to learn stuff so hopefully that's given you a good look at this tune now and you can have a bit of fun with it so uh, remember if you like what I do please subscribe to my YouTube channel and go to the website where you find thousands of well thousand over a thousand lessons uh, for free and courses to help you with all of the stuff that you might struggle with. So I uh, really hope you enjoy it and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.